Welcome back to DXB today. Got to sell something of a breast cancer awareness special for you as we come towards the end of October. I think it's key also to remember that uh, breast cancer uh, is not choosy when it comes to gender as well. Yes, we know that it is um, a cancer that blights women the world over, but it also affects men. Just ask our next guest, Mr. Dubai himself, Max Fardan, who's been kind enough to join us on the sofa and share his story. Thank you so much, first of all, for inviting. It's an honor to be here, to be with you guys. Um, well, quite, well, kudos to you for coming on and talking about it, first and foremost. I mean, um, and let's start with your journey. I mean, Max's journey with A, the diagnosis first, and then how you have combated your cancer. Um, when I heard I was 24, like every kid, I was, I was playing in the same time I was working, because in my family, uh, at that time, I'm, I'm the only worker. Uh, I'm the supporter of my family, so that's why uh, when I diagnosed it, it was already stage two, mm. cancer stage two. Um, I decided to do not tell my family because, you know, uh, you are the only worker in your family. You cannot, you know, you don't want to do hurt your family. Uh, at that time, I have one kid, my wife, my siblings, my father, mother. And, um, yeah, doctor called me, like, a lot of things, they did it tests difference and he called me back and he said like call, call your family father mother or someone I said like I'm not young so you can tell me he said don't worry everything will be okay <laughs> <laughs> something like, I worried you worried <laughs> <laughs> he said yeah um, you have a tumor in in your left chest so it's cancer it's already stage two uh, but we we're gonna try our best to do something and they did the checkups more and more. And they understand it's they can't do the surgery or anything that time because already before I had heart attack. So that's why they decide to uh, do the long uh, long treatments. Yeah. Max, I've known you for many years. You're definitely one of my most good-looking guy friends. Let's just put it out there. Mr. Dubai himself. I want to know a little bit more um, about the stigma surrounding breast cancer in men because as we mentioned uh, many times on this very show, it is uh, a cancer that's mostly associated with women. So as a man, when this is something you had to combat, what was the general reaction that you got from the community in general and how did it make you feel? Uh, actually, it's really important because maybe because of this is most most of the time touched for ladies, for women. So that's why I don't want to, to tell anyone, any any member of my family, my friends. I decide to move. If I thought if something happened with me, I want to make sure my family will be okay. So they give me four to six year time that time. <laughs> so that's that's the time I came to Dubai. And I start sharing my story after after almost two years mm. because I started going to hospital I started doing chemotherapy like everything you did all that the all alone no one knew you did that all alone yeah wow <laughs> yeah and uh, I because you know come on it's every family member you you want to you want to be um, good person right you are trying to be so that's why you, I don't want uh, it will touch my family because if I'm gonna tell them I, I'm sick what they were gonna do? They were gonna keep you at home, and they have to do everything. They have to work. They have to uh, come on. I ha I'm doing this because my mom, dad, they are old. So I need to support them, right? So, uh, um, so that's why I didn't tell anyone. And I, I told after two years, my friend. Uh, it was first time because um, I needed the help. And after four years before surgery, I told my wife. Yeah. Um, oh because they said that they need to get a sign from my family otherwise they cannot do the surgery yeah. so i told my wife i have i have to do this because come on even when i have all the treatments i wanted to talk with my family i used to wear a cap and i'm talking with my family that time so i came alone here um you know what i thought that time come on guys um in my in my country it's not so easy to make a wedding for uh, for the girls right so i i asked god god please 
give me a chance. At least I want to make wedding one of my sister. Until another one gets ready, I will buy my father gift car, and I, at least he will he will uh, he will drive as a taxi driver, and he will make money. My enter, until my another sister get ready, my I will gonna do something at least. So. This is something you see a lot, Doctor Huria. Well, shame I was just going to ask Max. I mean, in your so in, in your talking about uh, having breast cancer as a man. Um, in Uzbekistan or here, have you met many men who've had uh, breast cancer? No, I was, I was shocked, and even my doctor, he's he's shocked. He said like, few per people here, and, and it was. He said that it was all most of the time old people, right? Exactly. He said, you are youngest one who I see. It. That time it was only he said three or four percent, but now. He well, the books say ten percent. Mm, now it's, it's too much. Yeah, but to be honest, I mean, I'll tell you from my, my own practice, 10% of my practice are not men. Mm. I see very few. So I would say in the last 20 years, I've probably seen three mm. um, from the thousands of patients that I've seen. So it is actually very rare, mm. and you're actually right. It tends to be older men who get it. Um, a lot of the data we have comes out of um, uh, the United States, and it tends to be something that the African American community gets. So the classic um, male with breast cancer would be an older African American man, mm -hmm. but we rarely see it otherwise. I, and a lot of times I wondered if that was just because men sort of self-selected and went to a male surgeon; they would, didn't want to come to me. <laughs> I don't know if that was the reason why, but I saw, I have seen in my last 20 years of practice, very few. Of them, so that must be very isolating for you, because yeah. you have all this pink and you have all these women, and, and then then there's Max. Absolutely. You know? Max I, I, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I I can't even begin to tell you how emotional you've made me today, yeah, and I think you must be the most selfless human being I've met in no a very way. very long time. So bless you, and I'm so happy that Thank you've you. made it through, and we're so grateful to have you here Thank to inspire you so everyone. Much. Thank you for joining us today, and. Uh, on that note, it is time for our DXV in 60, where we're going to get to know our guest co-host today a little bit better. Ash, over to you. Yes, let's lighten the mood up a little bit, shall we? <laughs> let's end on a happy note. So, Dr. Huria, you've been so wonderful so far, and we would like to get to know you a little bit better before you leave the show. Okay. And <laughs> this segment is called DXV in 60, where within 60 seconds, I'm going to ask you as many questions as possible to get to know you a little bit better. Is that okay? Okay, it's a bit frightening. <laughs> All right. <I> didn't... <laughs> Go ahead. Your time starts now. If you weren't in the medical field, where would you be working? Oh, as a florist. One thing you <laughs> cannot live without? Um, chai. <laughs> Your motto in life and work? Um, I think, um, oh boy, that's a difficult one. I think, uh, Should I move on? think positive and positive things will happen. Perfect. Your most prized possession? Oh, my family. <laughs> Your hidden I don't gem possess in them, Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> Your hidden gem in Dubai. The beach. I don't know you, if it's hidden. <laughs> that's that's your, that's my gem. Your inspiration. Oh gosh, so many. My entire family. I come from a family of doctors. They inspire me every day. A topic you could go on and on about. Uh, probably <laughs> breast cancer. <laughs> Definitely. Top series you've watched this summer. Oh my gosh, um, I don't watch a lot of TV. <laughs> okay. And that is our time. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. fascinating getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. But we don't have any time to watch TV. Do you? I don't, well, no, I just, I don't know. I'm just not a TV person. Quite right too, as well. You know. Well, bless you. Thanks so much indeed. Thank uh, you. For Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. Uh, right, we're going to take a short break. After that break, uh, we will have dream performance from our very own dream girl from Dream Dubai. Lots of dreams. <laughs>